Um, this is Grassroots Podcasting. Um, I guess I'll introduce first. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg. Uh, we do uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show. Is uh, what we're mostly known for. Uh, I'm also involved with uh, the face marketing. We've put brought a lot of our stuff in together, uh, including uh, WPAJ interviews, where I've interviewed uh, in the music industry, just local guys, little guys, and big guys. As far as like biggest, like the Codmouth Kings, if anybody's ever heard of them, and uh, guys from their label, uh, the Daddy Long Legs from Well the Pack was in Bloodhound Gang, and, uh, and on top of that, I do a video cast called Crap TV for my man Crap. And uh, which is some fun with uh, on Twitch and stuff. And uh, you know, we've been doing this since January, the Mayhem show in particular, since January of 2006. And, uh, and these guys, our friends, our fellow dirty podcasters, or should I drink that? I don't know if it goes for some dirty. Period. At the last night, we're the dirty podcasters. We carry a third tag. Coffee. Coffee. Uh, Should I Drink That is a craft beer and fine spirit podcast. Uh, we do some video, and they're also which are very clear. Yeah. Uh, Start one of our videos. Uh, basically, what we do is we go to various six pack stores, uh, such as Three Sons Dog and Such, which provided all the beer last night for everyone. <laughs> Wonderful craft beer. Uh, over 600 beers available, and delicious hot dogs. And uh, what we do with this is uh, we get a theme for the show. Uh, we had Turkish beers from the food court. We went, actually went over to Turkey and brought back some, uh, some beverages for us. And then there's also been uh, shows for our IPA, which is India Pale Ale. It's a stand, uh, style. And pretty much fans will send us ideas too for our shows. They'll say, hey, you know what? I've got this. I've got some beer I want you guys to try. Let me know what your opinion is. Now, the main thing with our show that people seem to like is. We'll be brutally honest with you. Uh, we'll tell you if it sucks. Like, we don't care. And that's what everyone loves. It's not going to be, oh, well, you know, it's, oh, this is a delicious beer, and it's got this fruity aroma, and push it asleep. We're not about that. And if we were like that, we'd kill ourselves. It's, it's really it's just boring radio to listen to. Basically, what we're trying to do is one of the reasons we even started Shredder.com is uh, we're both pretty much beer snobs, but we're trying to get the normal average Coors Light or Iron City guy into uh, drinking better beers. And the last thing they want to hear is just have a creepy aroma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see? There we go. <laughs> it either sucks or it doesn't. Yeah, we can pretty much simplify the style so that everybody right. can understand what's going on. We talk about the brewing process. Uh, it's, Brad here actually goes ahead and brews his own beer. So you get a home brewer's perspective from everything. The other thing we do too is we go to breweries, we interview the brewer, uh, people that work here, managers, employees, to see what they like about why they like the beer. If they don't like the beer, usually you doesn't know, go on record, but we still talk about it. Uh, we go to brew fests. We talk to the brewers, the patrons, everyone that's there. Pretty much it's, uh, it's a fan based show where if you have something you want to say to us, you want to say why you like a beer, why you don't like a beer, well, listen. And then we'll tell you your honor. As Justin said earlier, <laughs> Send us hate mail too. We love that. Thanks. I'm a big fan of hate mail. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. Uh, if you can stir up a little hate or controversy, it actually does help out. We had a, a particular issue recently with uh, this theme that we have is if we don't like a beer, we chug it. You never pour it out. You don't waste the alcohol. You chug it. There's been instances where some of our shows had to drink a seven-year-old drama. Turn a little green. Would be me. <laughs> and then we also did one which was a dogfish head 120 minute IPA, which is 20% alcohol. Just out of spite, we chugged it. <laughs> I didn't, we had to do it. And the hate mail we got from Beer Advocate, from Rape Beer, from pretty much any respectable beer site, slammed us saying, You guys are a bunch of hacks. You're like college frat guys drinking. But all of them said we would never do that. Then. I don't think they really got the joke. <laughs> yeah, we pretty much did it as a jab to everybody right. that said there's no way anybody would ever do this yeah. type of thing. That's pretty much our marketing for, you know, it's, we can fish off great. If we can educate you on a good beer, wonderful. What are you guys And basically, uh, before we get into everything, I gotta, we got to explain the roles of uh, one of our sessions here at PodCamp. 
We started this last year. <laughs> Some people were there or have heard. Uh, fan interaction, that's what our show's about. And they got a bit of it too. That's a lot of what we're going to talk about. You know, we're going to talk about what's worked for us, what hasn't worked for us, and field any questions. That's basically, we just let you know what's worked for us because we're not your normal podcast. We're, we're not, uh, you know, we're not this week in tech. We're not, you know, something to be desired. We're, we just do what we like to do, right. and people seem to like it, and we've been trying to build on that. Now, the fan interaction for you guys out there is anytime you give a classic Ric Flair woo, give me an example. Woo! <laughs> Something like that happens. You want to be on this panel, you're getting that. Shit. Somebody, somebody gets chopped, basically. Yes. Yeah. Ric Flair is famous for a chop. I think I'm sitting over here. I beg you. I, I, I implore you all, because I am in the middle of these two, so I will get it from both sides. Please keep it to a minimum. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Basically, we're going to show you why we entertain you the way we do, and uh, and you know talk about what we're doing. Like I said, this is grassroots podcasting. I know we we started at Trachi here. I know I know he's not a regular on the show, but he's here anyways. Uh, but I started this thing with them doing the streaming radio, and it was just we got on the mic and we talked about wrestling because we like it. You know, all this our fans from back in the day from Hulk Hogan or you know whatever we used to watch. You know. And, uh, and then these guys got on with us, and and people started listening. <laughs> and we started uh, harnessing that through the MySpace accounts. Uh, through, but now we have a, a, a what's it called? Snapstream. We have a, a answering machine on our MySpace page. And people can call in with a conventional telephone and leave us a message. We play it on the air. For, like, one of the things that I want to get to before we uh, before we get too deep into this. All of this delicious Japanese candy, it's for you, the people. We have we have Pocky, we have tiny little Hello Panda treats, and we have these strange fruit flavored gummy things. There you go. Uh, right. Actually, because when we're when we're feeling down and tired on the show, or, um, we eat copious amounts of Pocky, and it just ignites the uh, pistons in our little brains. You're so, giving uh, it to us because you don't like it, or what? <laughs> no, no, no. We, <laughs> we, we want to share. <laughs> this that right there is this really is the well. fuel. Yeah. success not by uh, throwing a lot of money at our podcast we uh, this is the expenses right here this yeah this is this is what we drop all our money on is this whenever there's a podcast uh, we started we started with desktop mics and and uh, little to nothing basically we don't make any money and even in our day jobs we're not exactly uh, uh, rich men so but but in spite of all these things, we found uh, we found success in podcasting. So, actually, we started with a webcam that was yeah, taped to video. the top of a, a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. When you listen to our first show, you can tell how pretty rancid pretty it rough. is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty rough cut. But we put out we're 23 episodes now. Like I said, some video, some audio, and now we have two. Well, decent microphones, a mixing board, and it's all it took was about a couple hundred dollars. And the software came with it. It was a whole package for basically for podcasting. 
So you can get into this for only a, you know, a couple hundred dollars. And as long as you're entertaining the people, they're going to listen. You don't have to have all these fancy noises and you know, stuff that you hear on top 40 radio. As long as you're interested, people will listen. And if you want all this fancy noise, just make them yourself. That's I mean, right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make noises in your right. microphones. Well, yeah, that's all we do. I mean, with our uh, whole fan mail segment, depending on who's, who we got the mail from, we do we can sing our own little jingle right before we read it. So, you know. We're not singing the songs right now. No, no, we're not singing. That's good to know and listen to our show. But um, also, uh, also like in regards to advertising, um, these guys have already basically trumped us for advertising because they got yeah. Great Kangaroo to advertise on their site. And they were on DVD. They were on DVD, right? Twice. 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 Yeah. Actually, you, you guys were on the second time. Well, I think you heard the clip. No, no, you don't know. No, didn't hear the clip. news for them, too, yeah. When uh, Bob Cap was mentioned, they mentioned the Should I Drink That and the uh, Wrestling Mayhem guys. Really? Yeah. I think Lindsay for that. Spectacular. Yeah. No idea. But again, that, that's free advertising. We didn't we didn't drop a dime on it. It's all word of mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the best kind of advertising. And really through, like, well, well, when we first got started, our biggest our, our biggest push as far as advertising was uh, a fellow on the uh, Wrestling Observer. Yes. Uh, started, somebody sent up a email and said, hey, check out our show sometime. And he started... Once he gave an a, a article about our podcast and a couple other wrestling podcasts, and uh, I saw the quote on the site where he says, you know, these guys do it for free just because they're passionate about it, and they get all the credit in the world. And from then on, he would, they, he would mention, like, every show in the description, like, week to week. This lasted for, I don't know, a good four, four or six four, months four, yeah. uh, before he didn't write there anymore. But that was, that was a huge jump for us. And on top of that, getting, getting involved with your community, like, there's a beer community, there's a wrestling community, getting on our message, message boards, and say, you know, even if you, you know, if you're just active in that message board, and you have a little tag that has your podcast at the bottom, you know, that's all you need. You don't have to be like, hey, go listen to the Wrestling Mayhem show, unless you got something cool, like, like uh, we, we we interview several wrestlers locally and nationally uh, through the local independent scenes, and uh, we'll say, hey, there's an interview up here with uh, Jimmy DeMarco, who's, who wrestles in the IWC, or we did uh, Showtime Eric Young from the TNA because he was at a local show. We asked him, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it, and. Uh, and just, you know, just kind of word of mouth as far as that stuff. And uh, I think one of the things that's helped us a lot, too, is just simple things like business cards. We're a drinking podcast, and I go to the bar a lot. <laughs> it's research. <laughs> but, like, any time I'm out, my friends are always like, what the hell are you doing? So I'm always passing on business cards. If I give one person 30 of them, who cares? We'll pass them out to his friend. Simple things like that is really get you notice. And also, a nice, inexpensive way to do it, nice glossy cards. We got these from Vista Print. Basically, all you have to pay for, be, well, put your logo on there, you pay for shipping. That's it. It's like five bucks for 250 cards. Right now, we got uh, 1500 for $20. Nice, glossy, professional looking cards. You know, for an expensive price. And that's also one of the other nice things with podcast ones. You don't have to have a lot of blitz and glam. Have something that looks you know, pretty decent, nice clean logo, stuff like that. People will. And remember it too, because when you have a logo that is, even if it's crap, we drink it so you don't have to, people seem to remember that one. Yeah, and I remember you guys handed us a business card after our session last last blog game, but I was like, oh, that's not great. It's a great slogan. <laughs> Thought up at a bar too, while doing research. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, something else that's handy to do with it. Take those business cards, just leave them places. Leave them random places that people are going to find them and think, one, why is there a business card sitting here? And two, oh, okay, well, I'll sit and read it. I've even gone as far as going to a beer distributor and I'm just mm -hmm. walking down the aisle and talking them in cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, something they didn't know did that. It was, uh, it was a fan. Random food. Another nice thing too is, since these are business cards, you can go to Staples or Office Max, and you can buy business card size magnets. Or throw your business card on it. You might happen to see a couple around here. You know, some of the elevators and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Norm. But I mean, yeah, this is another way. It's, people love magnets. We actually went through about two boxes of these so far. And throw it on your refrigerator. Throw it on your, your beer fridge, wherever you want. Nice decoration. 
yeah, those are also a little bit better than business cards too, because you know you hand out business cards, they're great, but yes, people lose them or right on the back of them with other crap. Don't put it next to your wallet. No. no. <laughs> I found that out with my ATM card, and stuff that's next to your wall. Does anybody have any questions about what we're doing? I just want to how long, how long did it take you guys to realize that you had something here? I mean, for, for what period of time did you start seeing this substantial? What? <laughs> that was a long time. Well, we started with a, on a server, a streaming server, before we were podcasting with 15 listeners. So. Um, but I don't know. It was a few months in, and we started looking at the numbers. Uh, like we were, uh, we were linked through something called a uh, Foodcast or something. And uh, I remember, like, it was, and, and even like even though that was low numbers, so it was just one place they were getting our cast through. We started seeing like. Three hits from Shanghai. Three hits from Egypt. That was, yeah. That's why we say, like, uh, coming to you from from uh, L.A. to Cairo, Egypt, because we know we have one fan there. Yeah. And uh, when we have a guy, it was actually summer of last year when uh, when I think Vim first started emailing us and from London. Yeah. 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 We thought it was a chicken first. Yeah. yeah we, we had no idea. He had, little, he had a MySpace page with no photos, and he wasn't very descriptive. We're like, Vimmel? Is that? Is that a girl's name? I don't know. Yeah. I would, we couldn't tell. <laughs> it turns out he's a rugby player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a rugby player and a, uh, he's a surgeon now. He's a surgeon. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a doctor from London, and he would listen to us uh, when he was going through going through school. So. And and then he slept on the food farm in January when he visited us. He, he flew in for a weekend. He spent a weekend with us. I think he spent a week in New York because his girlfriend was there or something like that. And he was. It was ridiculous the whole time because you just sit there and be like, okay, you're from London and you listen to our show and that's why you're here? It, it's it's mind-boggling. And that's that's one of those things that it really hits you like, oh, okay, well, I think we have something. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we did this for like six months just for the fun of it. Like maybe some of our friends listened to it and everything and, and yeah. Probably sucked a lot when we started. We, no, we did oh, yeah. suck a lot when we started. It's okay to suck when you start. Oh yeah, yeah it's that's a learning curve. I, I think I heard last maybe boot camp. It was like when you if you're just getting started and you do that first podcast, don't put it everywhere. Like start it, kind of put that word out, you gotta kind of get that in motion. But you don't want everybody to listen to your first podcast because even if you get good, like three months down the line. Um, Somebody's who heard that first podcast is like, oh, those guys suck. I'm not going back to them. I know I've done that with a few, and then actually listened to it and and, and was pleasantly surprised. Now, um, but that, but that that definitely like, especially if you're getting started, there's a learning curve, and not everybody's great right out of the gate. I know we weren't. <laughs> so uh, it took us probably about six months before we realized that people were starting to pay attention to us. We had uh, I think a couple hundred downloads. Uh, between 100 and 200 for the first few, first few shows, and then in March of it was March this year is when we released the uh, Dogfish Head video, and then all of a sudden we were, a lot of people started paying attention, and we saw our numbers go from a couple hundred to a couple thousand. <laughs> so it's, it's been a nice little change of pace there, knowing that a lot more people are starting to listen to us now, and it, it wasn't just that one show. It's been every show since then. We're still getting couple thousand downloads and it amazes us that well first of all people want to listen to us. Yeah. We're just we're two guys from Pittsburgh that talk about beer. What about access? If you if you guys found that there was a curve, I mean it need neither field that you're in with what we would call the elitist I guess. But if you want to talk to a brewmaster or you want to talk to someone who, who uh, makes scotch or you folks want to talk to a wrestler, a manager or an agent, do you find that you have easy access or has there been a ladder to find to get there? I think as far as we're concerned, we have really easy access because we're basically a free advertisement for that brewery mm -hmm. or that beer style or that, you know, and they, they love it and they welcome us. Most brewmasters or even homebrewers that you're going to talk to are very laid back. They love talking about what they do. It's their passion and they know that we're here to help promote them and we have the same passion that they do. So it's only nice with like, we'll sit down with you, we'll tell you whatever you want to know. Yeah. We've had shows with uh, there's a little group of Perfect Knobs and Cranberry, and we've done a couple of shows from several different bars down in Pittsburgh. And they love it, and they know our fans will hear that and go to the bar, go to the pub, and check it out. 
so they don't fear the fact that you guys are fearless as far as your particular state. Some places like Reverend Hobbs, I kind of mentioned to him that we're not the most politically, politically correct bastards on the planet. So we watch it when we're at live places. Yes, yeah. I mean, we know our place, you know. Like when we're in our studio, even the F-bombs are flying or whatever, we don't really care. That's the most us. part now. you got to be yourself. That's another big thing in this sort of podcast. If you're trying to, you know, fake it or it doesn't work. you got to be yourself. People can tell when you're faking it. Right? Yeah. 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 They can hear it in your voice. Like, there's just no way around it. Like, never read off the script. Memorize it. Yeah. Yeah. Never read it. You can tell that on these on some of these. Read off a piece of paper. Grab cheat sheets. Cheat sheets. <clears throat> Those definitely work for us. There's only so much you can fit into one show. You want to make sure you hit everything. So usually what we'll do is we'll, we write an outline of the show of what we want to hit so that there's news stories that are going on. Like recently there was four different news stories that were going on within Pennsylvania with was it in bed with when the Rolling Rock was leaving, and, uh, Pittsburgh Brewing. So we got to hit all these by chance in one show. And people tuned in to listen to that because they're like, these guys are local. They know what's going on. Now let's get their opinion, not what the major media is going to print on us. Um, well, for us, as far as accessibility, uh, we really, we shot, like, WWE is not going to talk to us. Like, they hardly, they are very stringent on who their wrestlers talk to. They don't want anybody bad-mouthing anybody else. And uh, TNA was pretty good about it, too, until recently when one of their wrestlers did shoot off his mouth about management on a radio show, like on a, a terrestrial radio show. And, uh, but we go to the local show, IWC, an international wrestling cartel. Uh, run by Norm Connors. They usually do shows down in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, and they are probably the biggest one in the area. There's probably like four or five beds around here, but they're the ones bringing in like guys from TNA, you know, that aren't locked down to contract because they they're still a new fed. Um, but we started with you know a, you know just a wrestler I knew that I met at a concert that actually told me about the fed, and uh, then kind of through word of mouth, he went to the shows, hung out at the after parties, which are open to everybody that goes to those shows. And they started to know us, and and one time about eight of them chopped at this guy on his birthday down here. <laughs> so that kind of got us in the door. So and actually, the view just party with them last week too. Yeah, I don't know. Like birthday. The crowbar on the strip. Yeah. So so there. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, there there is a, a ladder to come, to climb, just mm -hmm. like you said, because of the nature of the business. Because uh, wrestling as a whole, it is a it's kind of a shady and secretive business, but. Um, like he said, we, we went to the shows and we went to went to the after parties and they got to know us and once they understand that we're not gonna be like complete jackasses on the on the air and we're not gonna we're not gonna like run them into the ground and put them in awkward positions in the interviews. Once they understand that, then then yeah, the, then word of mouth will spread within the groups and everything like that. And you do get you do get a little bit further up the ladder. Now in in contrast there's uh, there's other podcasts out there who do get the guys from TNA regularly. They get the WWE guys, and that's because they're further up the ladder. They know. And the they they live in Orlando, I believe. That's, yeah. And they, so they go to all the shows, and they're pretty much doing the same thing with TNA. Mm -hmm. You know, the big the big on spike TV group. You know, uh, so they're talking to the right people, and you know we just don't have that access right now, being in Pittsburgh. But we have access to great talent, because a lot of it comes through this event. A lot of the Ring of Honor talent, which a lot of them ends up in TNA and WWE. Um, we actually, uh, two guys, um, one we've interviewed on the show, the other one we should be interviewing in the next couple weeks, have just the last week, we're on SmackDown, both of them. Uh, because it was in Youngstown, Ohio, and they call a lot of local talent. And uh, one of them's been there, well, they've both been there a few times. Um, and on top of that, like when they find out about the cast and what we're like, a lot of them, it, it, it just, our personalities kind of fit with these guys because they're, you know, kind of a rough personality, most of them. Um, like, we, we've had several of them over to the house for the show a lot, a lot of the local guys. Uh, we did a video interview with this tag team called Sexual Grass that we put on the web because they wanted something for their DVD they were working on. Uh, we, we invited uh, Michael the Bomber Facade over uh, just to be on the show with us. We invited uh, uh, Marshall Gambino and uh, Jimmy DeMarco, who are IWC guys, and uh, I think at least one of them was on WWE himself as like a security guard. And they love that they can come and basically say whatever the hell they want. And they get pretty rushed. And they love that they have that open forum that they can't even do in the ring because they have 
you know their script to go by and everything, but just just to let loose and kick in and talk about wrestling or whatever the hell they want to. And and I think that's why we keep having people that like hear about us, know about us, and we ask them about an interview, and they're like generally like, yeah, I'll do it. I'd love to. And uh, we've just got that report going with them right now. But also it depends on your industry too. Yeah, you, you can't. You can have people to interview, but the interviews on our on our show are they're a driving thing for it. They're they're big ratings getters, and there's something we try to keep on at least semi regularly. These guys don't have to worry as much about interviews because like, because of the industry. The, Everyone's always going to want to drink beer. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's getting harder with especially with the whole wrestling thing in lieu of uh, recent events with all the big uh, steroid scandal and everything else that's going around with it. And on top of that, a lot of, because of this scandal, a lot of, like I said, WWE, TNA, they're locking down and any type of interview has to go through their management because they don't want anything being said that's going to come back and look bad on the company. And that's a lot of the problem we're running into now is because if it's going to look bad on the company, they want nothing to do with it. And so, I mean, they're both businesses, so when it comes down to it, it, they both say it's a form of entertainment, but at the root of all that's business, and it's all about making money. If you can't make money, then... At, at some point, yeah, like, I, again, I, I can only speak for us, at some point you have to worry about, right now it's okay, we're friends with the wrestlers, and that's how we get our interviews. At some point, if we want to move up the ladder, we have to become friends with the management and stop, and not, be, not have to be friends with the wrestlers, you know what I mean? Like, you have to... Go above them. Exactly, exactly. Because it gets to the point where the wrestlers can't go out of the room. I got a very question I was thinking about. Attention breaker. We're getting a little too serious. As far as moving up the ladder, like we move to that next step. You know, you're talking about you're, you're friends with the talent now. If you want to be friends with the money and the management, that's kind of your, your next step. But what, what are your goals for, for both shows? Like, sort of what were your goals when you started, and what are your goals now? And how they we are a goalless goals. podcast. <laughs> we do because we love it, and we love getting right. together and talking. We love the discussions we get into because we don't agree on anything. Uh, for instance, uh, this guy doesn't like Triple H coming back like he just is going to be at SummerSlam. Yeah. And the uh, rest of us are kind of ragging on him about it, but uh, but and, but still, there's a gent, like, yeah, we go over the top at times, and we just kind of let loose for a lot of the stuff like that, but a lot of times, we'll get in a serious, frank discussion of, like, no, I don't think he's good for what he's done for the industry, no, I don't think he's a good wrestler, versus, yeah, I think he's done a lot, I think he's a great wrestler, I think, he's, you know, there, there's no problem with him, mm -hmm. and, and we'll, we'll get in the same kind of debates about, like, what WWE's doing, you know, should they be pushing the buttons that they're pushing? Why, why, is the, why does TNA suck so damn much right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's why we're not getting any interviews with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for them all to quit. They just like, you know, a whole bunch yeah. of guys. We're going to try pursuing them since they don't know they're going to get caught. Yeah. Really, I mean... <laughs> uh, pretty much it just started out with the four of us just hanging out, talking about what we've seen on Raw the night before. Mm -hmm. And then we just put a microphone to ourselves yeah. and just figure, why not let other people listen to what we jab, what we jab about for two hours? And on the accessibility, the, uh, the local guys we get a hold of, they love the publicity. Anything mm -hmm. to get their name out there, because a big part of the wrestling community is with the internet and finding like, oh, I heard of this wrestler, Sweet Sour Larry Sweeney. Um, and you can go on YouTube and find like a list of videos that he's done all over the place. And he's been on some very, you know, very significant uh, independent uh, uh, groups, and he had, he, and another guy that was on WWE, he actually played a uh, uh, Hulk Hogan's son in a scoop they did of Hogan's No Vet. No, that, that was, that was, what is it? Same guy. Yeah. yeah. Same guy. <laughs> you said it was a different guy. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That gives it an extra loud. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, have anybody before you leave, make sure you sign the YouTube. Yeah, please. We're, we brought we brought the YouTube. It's, uh, it's been in the lounge all day. It, we're we're very much pushing the community aspect. We're trying yeah. to get everybody to sign it. I don't is know. So, if I is can... somebody gonna get hit with that later? I don't know. <laughs> After party. Are you are you, are you volunteering? No. <laughs> I haven't I haven't are figured out if I want to scan it yet. Or yet. Get hit by it. <laughs> It doesn't hurt that much. <laughs> we'll bring it to the next podcast, but I don't know yet. <laughs>
But um, like we were saying about the about the wrestlers, uh, I've always said if you're good to your fans, they'll be good to you. We're good to our fans. They provide us. Our whole second hour is fan content. Yeah. They send us letters. They send us videos. They leave leave us messages. So. Uh, and then yeah, we read them on really the air and then emails. The really long and entertaining emails. Like our fans have become like characters on our show. Oh, that's true. As much as any don't, of us what, are. Don't be what? afraid to condense certain reader emails because otherwise it would be half an hour on one email. What's the best each of you? What's the best user submission you've ever gotten? A feedback or what? Well, I gotta say, because we kind of started this interesting campaign where I'm apparently running for president. And, uh, <laughs> several wrestlers uh, have called in to put their bid in to be my vice president. Originally, I wanted the IWC announcer Chuck Roberts because he's he's just he's Chuck Roberts. That's all I have to say. You should go look him up. Uh, I'm gonna ask him. He's he rubbed his butt. But then, then it turned into uh, The Rock wanted to be part of it. He wanted to fight for my vice presidency, but he had to bow out because we couldn't give him ten grand. And uh, now Stone Cold Steve Austin. So it's officially Sorgatron 31608. So uh, <laughs> it's been a very interesting name again lately. Um, oh, uh, aside from that, because he's not here, I think. I think I know the answer to his. Oh, uh, Chad the Shad, the, other, the fourth member of our show, uh, has a Facebook group called Chad is Rad, the official <laughs> Facebook group of Chad the Shad. That is up around 130 members right now. Yeah. And, uh, and there's some interesting uh, user submitted questions as in, was your favorite Chad the Shad match, feud, or moment? Yeah. Uh, so but uh, everybody everybody has to go to his uh, fan group and uh, give him a shit for not coming to pod camp. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'd have to say, to me, it's a... But <laughs> you're giving yourself one. <laughs> <laughs> there are random chops happening. You don't just clap, all right? <laughs> Woo! Of, of, like we, we mentioned when uh, when Vimmel flew in from London, that was absolutely fantastic. He submitted himself. <laughs> he submitted himself to the state. But uh, the other one, I have to say, um, I uh, I just recently uh, graduated from college here at the Art Institute. I've been trying to find a job. I missed a couple episodes of the show, but uh, anytime I would miss an episode, I would get two or three messages from the fans saying, uh, "I hope to see you back on the show. Uh, you know, take care of what you need to take care of. Congratulations on graduating, or or get your portfolio done, stuff like that." They're they're very they just personally supportive, so I have to say that's my favorite. And a lot of our fans are not over the age of eighteen. <laughs> I don't know why, but it yeah. is true. Yeah, our should be. Our legal drinking ages for, for legal reasons are we're obligated to say that everyone is over the age of 18 who listens to Should I Drink That and uh, partakes in their advice when they turn 21. Yeah. 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 Even on our MySpace page, I think we even have a disclaimer on there saying you must be of legal drinking age yes. and your country of origin to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever state you're in. But on his question, I think my favorite user interaction was when we did the uh, dogfish one chug. I mean, we kind of had our own separate like hate forum for a while, and it was great. <laughs> Yeah, we had some people on there defending us. 18 pages. 18 pages, just about our one video. So that helped us a lot, and we got a lot of exposure from that. You know, people hate us. I mean, who cares? Uh, the question before was, you, you had the question before, right? With, well, I guess what we're looking to achieve. Oh, yeah, the goal thing. Yeah, the goal thing. We don't talk much about goals when you drink beer, but <laughs> uh, when we first started out, it was just the two of us were. We're good friends that always get together to drink beer. And we went on the internet and we saw that there's other people talking about beer. I'm like, you know what, they can do it. We can do it too. Yeah, so, so we gave it a shot. And you're going to hit me? Oh, <laughs> And then um, over time, you know, we were just happy to have you know, a couple hundred people listen to us. We're like, this is great. A couple hundred people want to listen to us talk about beer. And then today, or 
last month, actually, we got probably the biggest honor that any beer review podcast I think has ever gotten is we were nominated for a 2007 podcast award in food and drink. So there must be a lot of drunk people out there voting for us. <laughs> we don't know how it happened. As far as we know, we're the only podcast from Pittsburgh ever nominated for a podcast award. Not sure about Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a lot of people in the building. So yeah, that was probably the, that's probably been the pinnacle so far. Uh, mainly our, our goal is to keep getting listeners. And if we can convert even a couple people to start drinking good craft beer. Right. Kind of get away from the Buds and the Millers and everything. And, and give it a you also get hit a lot. <laughs> so, so if we can convert a couple of people, or even if you give it a chance, just try the beer. There are other options out there besides the stuff that you use, you know, it's while you're watching TV. Football or, beers. Yeah, football beers. <laughs> or as they say, white trash beers, whatever they want to call the high volume beers that are out there. There are good beers. And Pittsburgh actually has a fairly large selection of yeah. craft beers. And there's Church Brewers, there's Scott over at East End. East End Brewing. Uh, Burford and Hops. Rock Bottom, uh, there's a the new place that's mm -hmm. open out in Monroe. I mean, it's, Pittsburgh is actually a hotbed for podcasting, vlogging, vlogging, and beer. <laughs> and wrestling. <laughs> actually, this is a very good wrestling town. That's a band in general. Woo! That's <laughs> <laughs> almost a face. So, uh, what do we have? Oh! <laughs> I see our target next. <laughs> A lot of back before it became like your big WWE, WCW, it was local territories and there was a lot of individual territories that were concentrated around this area, the northern eastern part of the United States. And there was a lot of them. There was probably a good I wanna say like yeah, in the hundreds that were that were just in the area, like within a 50 to 100 mile radius. And it's just. Well, it's time for us to wrap up. I guess the, the whole point, I don't know how educational we were, but there's not a lot of techniques or anything we went over. But basically, what we're trying to say, you know, talk about what you know, talk about what you love, don't have any inhibitions about it. And visit, our, visit the websites. <laughs> yeah, should I drink that.com, wrestling mayhem show.com. <laughs> Justin has this as his homepage. He wasn't oh, he's gone. There you go. Check out the site. Thank you, please. Thank you, man. Please check out this fellow who's going to teach you how to start a podcast uh, in room 435 right after this. And please have some candy. Yeah. Woo! 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 Oh! 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 Real quick, real quick. I told this guy he gets a one overhand shot from us before the panel's over. What? This one.